Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's Grandmaster Tiffany T Dog, as the street name goes. T <laughs> Dog. <laughs> uh, T Dog. You got to say it with like a W. T Dog. T Dog. T Dog. Yeah, okay. Uh, How are you guys? Hello. I meet the Templars. They're they're losing their minds right now. Hey Templars, you are the deal. Thank you guys for being such awesome supporters of Voctiv. We are so blessed to have you as our friends and fans. We are really, really thrilled. And I'm so happy to be invited to be here tonight. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for clearly not having anything better to do. Um, that's... Like sleep? <laughs> Sorry. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a thing. I'm kidding. Uh, one of my, no, this... the thing I really want to make sure I don't forget to say, if you'll allow me here, is that one of our longtime supporters, Hattie Lawson, is a massive, 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 oh. 20 minutes ago, or 20 minutes later, massive, massive fan. <laughs> uh, Hattie, Hattie what? Hattie Lawson. Hattie Lawson. Hello, Hattie Lawson. Are you listening? Are you watching? <laughs> Hattie recently had a birthday on the 8th. And I want to tell you if... Happy birthday, Hattie Lawson. Yes, yes. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Sorry, it's just me, but it's, you know... This it's just me. Hattie. Happy birthday, my friend. Hope it was a good one. <laughs> Absolutely. I want to tell you about Hattie if you'll let me for a second, pretty please. Please. Um, Hattie once wrote me one of the sweetest letters to our P.O. box and like hand wrote it and was so kind about looking forward to the videos, lo loving Voctive, asking me if I had seen some... Um, Forgive my ignorance, but like, like the no, B, whatever, the, what, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like the the B sides, you know what I mean? Like he's like, have you heard about this secret performance and this time Tiffany fought a bear and there was this whole thing involving. <laughs> yes, exactly. And the, it was amazing. So, um, <laughs> yeah, she, she 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 fought off all the raccoons out of her trash can. <laughs> <laughs> Oh That's my awesome. goodness! Awesome, I love that. Remember when there were B sides of records? I remember that. Yeah. I remember. I remember buying singles because I was one of those people. I was too. I did it all. I did all that. <laughs> but I loved the records because you had all the, um, you had you know the the lyrics sometimes, or you had the, um, you know, the, and all the credits and all the things. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's oh, oh what? Oh. That's... Get away! Get away! <laughs> okay. Isn't that weird? This, this is the best interview ever. I did it! I did it! This I is... fought off the bear. Yeah, I I barely saw it. Oh, you want to see it again? <laughs> oh my god! Okay. Oh. You you asked for it. Okay. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Yeah, I'm one of those. That's why Kurt and I go so well together. <laughs> Kurt von Schmidow and I have been friends for 30 years, and we're just crazy, wild people. And so that's why we have so much fun together when we um, we do reactions to reactions. Sometimes. <laughs> the, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I I don't remember if it was you or Kurt first. But I think both of you left me a really nice comment on one of my videos, and I couldn't believe that. I was utterly blown yeah, away. Was, yeah, I mean, I, Kurt and me both probably. Um, wow, yours. You're, you're, you were so awesome, and so nice, and just, I mean, like it's, we really do read them, and we really do appreciate you guys appreciating us and appreciating the, um, the art form. It means a lot. Well, I gotta say, your version of Prince of Egypt, because that I, that has a special place in my heart. It really does. I do. Listen, I... let me tell you, we had um, a concert last night. It was a kind of it was a command performance, if you will, um, for uh, some kids that are thinking of that are coming to Rollins College. So Rollins College is where Jamie Ray works, our our arranger, director, mm -hmm. founder, all that. So you know that, right? I do now. Did you, okay, so Rollins College is in Orlando. Okay. And it's a private 
uh, college. It's where Fred Rogers from, you know, Mr. Rogers, that's where he went to college. And um, it's really, it's so special. But um, so Jamie Ray uh, is a professor there. And so we, um, about five years ago, were um, deemed uh, Roll- see, um, artist in residence. Thank you. Thank you, honey. Uh, <laughs> artist in residence uh, at Rollins College. Whoa. So anyway, what, uh, you know, Kurt's really funny because Kurt says, I guess that means we're all doctors or something. You know, he's so funny. But um, <laughs> it really, it just gives us an opportunity to meet someplace um whenever we want and have there's a stage there at the music place and we can you know do some of our videos and things like that anyway uh too long a backstory to say that during the summer they have a summer um acapella music camp for kids that are considering coming to rollins so this week is that and so uh the very first night was last night as they were getting um signed in and everything and so we as a group did a command performance for like I don't know 20 kids maybe and their parents and um, we did like an hour-long concert it was just special you know I mean um, because it's our opportunity to to give something special and you know touchable to the kids and then we go down and we talk to them and they ask us questions and and then during the week um, every day um, however people can get there um, Voctive comes in and sits in with the kids as they're learning songs and they ask us questions and you know it's just an opportunity to kind of um, get, get close to the kids you know and talk to them and and you know tell them how we were influenced um, growing up oh. so anyway so that's what we did and so then last night when we were done we were all talking about making videos and things and the Prince of Egypt was all we talked about the prince of egypt we've got to do the prince of egypt medley it's just it's killing us we've got to do it so we really are uh thinking about doing it i'm just not sure when (laughs) but i'll let you know for sure it's please because the um uh i don't really know a non crass way to say this um but like my issue with lesser life forms than you guys if you will is um is there's 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 a quintessential like easy way to phone it in with stuff like that especially if you have a a vast majority of you guys in there right like a large number in Voctive. it's not like pentatonics where there's five of them or something like when you have that diverse Um, yeah i I don't know i guess that's the thing that is really cool as if i can you know be it ever so humble um to say that We have these ridiculous powerhouse singers. Every single person has something really special and unique to that person. Um, And 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 another really cool thing is that, and we talked about this with the kids last night, is that Jamie writes for us specifically. So it's if I can hang on a G for you know eight measures. then he's going to write it in whatever key that the special note is a G and I'll hang and hang and hang, you know, like for instance, um, like for instance, uh, anything you can do, we do that in concert and, and Drew and I can hold a G for a super long time. Whereas, you know, Kate, of course, you know, can hold a high D flat or a high E flat forever and ever and ever. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what makes it so fun is that he, literally has the sky to write it just the sky's the limit he can just write whatever and like with you guys the thing i've noticed if i may be so bold the thing that i've noticed is um oftentimes when i've seen other groups in the past even with instrumentalists is involved as well what they'll do is they'll have their superstars and that's really cute and the superstars go to the front oh look they sing really high yay um and uh, my wife says I'm aggressive and opinionated. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, what I love about Voctiv is that the support roles are almost more important and showcased than the crazy look at me hold this note for 27 years. But like the support and the shifts that you guys do are so precise. It's that to me. And which brings me back to 
um, Prince of Egypt, which I apologize that I don't know everybody's name, but the fact that you guys went to the detail to make sure, I'm assuming here, that the pronunciation of the Hebrew was so on point, and that's what I couldn't shut up about in my reaction video. Yeah, very important. And that's that's one really important thing with Jamie is he he really is a researcher too, you know. He researches to make sure that we can do these different songs because, of course, there's copyright issues with everything, you know. Yeah. Um, and we found that out through the through the years. You know, we've learned a lot <laughs> um, that you can do just a certain amount, you know, be, uh, or at all. Some songs we you know weren't able to get permission to do at all. Mm. Um, and so then he researches, you know, the the dialect. Um, we did a song from Coco, and that was real important that that was done specific too. So, yeah, it's very it's real important. And then we all worked on it really hard. <laughs> yeah, that's because the uh, the other renditions I've seen on the internet, the if the Hebrew is either gone completely, or it's phoned in, so to speak. And that's yeah. it because that when I um, that was the movie that I saw when I was quite younger actually when it first came out and remember thinking like is that captain picard doing one of the voices and what what is going and which led me to and i'm going to kind of gush here for a second um that movie (laughs) led me to studio ghibli so that's how i found princess mononoke and spirited away and all these amazing animation films because that one woke me up wow you know a lot of that that's just (laughs) That's my, like, I speak Japanese as well, so that's, like, kind of the the thing that I got into with that. Spirited Away is a masterpiece. If you haven't seen it, please watch oh, it. I, well, I haven't, but, I mean, I'll tell you who is one of our, um, I mean, I'm she she's a huge Pokemon person mm. and knows all the things, you know, um, Captain Picard and all that. I mean, she's a Trekkie and all the, is yes. Sarah Whittemore. Oh. She is a huge pokemon and and well so are the other girls are too i'm just i'm just not you know but they are pokemon people and she has probably seen that and knows she would be one that you would enjoy (laughs) talking to because she's probably got seen all that stuff yes but uh, i'll watch it are you at all into animation movies because the one thing i want to say about it is it's the uh, studio ghibli which is hayao miyazaki is the gentleman that does them he still hand draws it and it's really? like I mean, hand drawing the blades of grass in the wind still, and like unbelievable. Some sort of um, meditative thing, you know, for him to do that, you know, because um, I mean, there's a reason why there are, you know, they're artistic, and and if you don't do it somehow, if you just phone it in or press a button, I don't know, to the real artistic people, it doesn't give the same effect i don't know yeah i mean if he was a singer he'd be invocative let's be real <laughs> absolutely and what's his name again miyaki miyazaki miyazaki yes okay. and and tell me what it's called again a spirited away a spirited away okay but that's i'm gonna look at that's why i ask if you're not super well versed in animation you should probably start with howl's moving castle okay which is like howl's moving castle okay yeah yeah, Mr. I've never heard of it, but I mean, it's just, you know, I, I just haven't looked for something like that. So I'd, I'm thrilled to know that there's something fresh to go find and watch. Oh, yeah. He's a big fan of Victorian era and steampunk. So he combines them oh, into I all this. That. I love it's, that, too. It's amazing. <laughs> but uh, let's talk about you because enough about Miyazaki. That's <laughs> awesome. How did you, um, what, how or why did you start learning Japanese? Uh, I was failing French miserably, and <laughs> and uh, up in Canada where I live, we have to mandatorily take French from like grade four to okay. to uh, through eighth grade. And eighth grade after eighth grade, you're allowed to choose an elective. And I I had like forty nine percent in French eight, and I remember the teacher just saying to me, "Look, I'll pass you if you don't take French nine. <laughs> <laughs> Please go somewhere else. 100%. <laughs> and so You're I, making me crazy. <laughs> so I thought, why not take this that has no English letters in it and it's a bunch of crazy characters? I do karate. This should be fun. And, <laughs> this should be easy. Exactly. And oh that was my it. Goodness. That well, was it. It's the most beautiful language to, uh, you know, to, to watch them write. 
so it's uh it's um yeah i was in japan in 2000 because i was doing a lot of martial arts stuff over there and um because oh, cool. who, who has friends when they're 18 <laughs> are, you um, a, are you a black belt uh oh i'm i'm wearing one right now it keeps my jeans up i'm really excited <laughs> that's something my husband would have said yeah i i have one more in my closet too it's good for pants <laughs> but yeah so you're but are you a black belt i'm a huge passionate like hobbyist of the martial art i wouldn't say i have any obscene skill at it but uh awesome. i like to wear white clothes because they get dirty and my wife gets livid which Uh-oh, is lovely. which is fun but uh, <laughs> yes that's not fair by the way but uh, uh just a random fact because i know random things the calligraphy that Japanese people do has a specific stroke order because they never wanted the ink to get into their long sleeve. So they developed their entire alphabet over how do I write this so that I don't drag my sleeve across the ink. It's pretty cool. For real? Dead serious. Dead serious. I think that's awesome. I think that's awesome. Yeah. I, you know, that's, I've traveled a lot through the years just personally and then um voctiv has gone to to paris but um but personally i've traveled all over the world and i've never been to japan never and it's one place i'd like to go just i just think the history is magnificent um i love i love the, how they treat their uh, elderly i i just the honor and the respect of, of everything is there's just there's order and there's respect and there's honor and i don't know I, I'd love to go there. I was someday. I was a sucker for that too. And uh, the calligraphy is akin to sword art, so they draw parallels to when you're learning sword. It's like, oh, draw the character for house. It's really oh, cool. that's cool. It's really cool. Yeah, I I never knew that, but that makes total sense. Of course it does. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, I, I can nerd out with Japanese, so I'll just tell you one more thing and then I'll shut up about it. But um, uh, like when you're learning love- the when you're learning the moves, like a block, like this is me blocking. As you can see, I have pure ninja skill. But like uh, yeah. when you're when you're, I really I'm trying to block the sun because I'm a ginger. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I when you were blocking, they were saying in Japanese they were expressing to us that a, that a block is a strike. It's not something you hold still, but you meet their attack and become a block. And when you feel the weight, you must consider the weight of the mountain and drag the weight of the mountain through the soles of your feet. And I was like, is this like poetry? Oh my god, well, man! I mean, I, it, but that makes it. There's there's a reason for everything. Yes. There's a reason for everything that. And um, and that's that's awesome. It's visual, so visual. It gives you different kinds of strength. I think. I think so. I've I've uh, I've used it for a lot of adversity before. Wow. So, like, <laughs> how do you prepare yourself mentally to talking to the great T Dog? I you're such a weirdo. <laughs> well, ask me some questions. You know, there's nothing. I mean, I'm just I'm an open book. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to get you with some rapid fire once. Okay. I'm ready. Let's go chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Chocolate. Okay, I see that you were disgusted by the fact that even vanilla was considered in this conversation. No, not really, but but definitely chocolate. (laughs) Uh, If if holding, let's say, a D flat, do you ever ever sit there and actually go, holy shit, that was like nine measures right there? I'm going to go for 10 next time because I am (laughs) T-Dog. Well, I definitely do try to beat Drew in our contest uh, when we when we hold something really long. But I haven't beat him yet. So uh, (laughs) I'm still working on it. We've got some some awesome singers that can hold things for a long time. So the the secret is to just tickle them. um, It's fun to try to challenge yourself to, to do stuff better. Okay, got a weird one for you. The most obscure your relationship you have with music now what i mean by that is like is like um i have this whole music channel thing going on here because clearly i have nothing else that people care about i uh (laughs) (laughs) see mom people talk to me okay (laughs) Uh, 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 but like the most obscure like octopus tentacle that attaches to music for you like I would sit here and tell you that uh, we were in Paris and I was missing Greece when we were there because they had traditional music of like the 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 uh, buzaki I think they call it the buzaki as late as a lap steel guitar across the the open field of the Parthenon I was like that's legit dope I also play in a death metal band where I swing my hair like a jackass because we're angry okay 
I wonder, yeah. what's your that, extremes? That that's a I mean, that's uh, got a big scope. Um I mean I can tell you something that I did. I can tell you a gig I did. Huh? I mean, okay, yeah. My husband's throwing me ideas. Um <laughs> Well, I'll tell you this, and a lot of people in my in my realm of friends know this, but I am a massive, I mean, really big time, Osmond fan. Oh. I mean, big. And, um, yeah. And, you know, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I was only allowed – to listen to to them or church music <laughs> <grow up. laughs> and you know my all my friends are listening to kiss and you know aerosmith and i'm like mm, donnie marie and then i just i fell in love with donnie marie so and then just the osmonds in general they had this family sound and it just it really thrills me so i mean i would literally watch qbc if marie osmond was on it um and she was peddling one of her dolls. I would watch it. <laughs> now, is she going to sing on QVC? No. Um, and do I have en enough money to buy one of her dolls? Well, not today, but maybe someday. Okay. I am I doing good? Like, so yeah, I, it's a, it's a thing. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> amazing. Weird. I mean, Sarah does Pikachu. Sarah does Pikachu. You know, come on, Pokemon. <laughs> we all have our thing. I mean, hundred percent. I I'm curious if you'll allow me to ask you your opinions on extreme death metal. Um, it, it you're allowed to ask me, and I would say it's lots of noise to me. Oh, interesting, interesting. Yeah, it's noisy to me, and I, um, yeah. And, and and I don't mean, you know, any, uh, I mean, I don't want to upset anybody, <laughs> but it's not, it's not my thing. If I, if I could uh, sing with Michael Buble, I, um, I think I, and Donny Osmond, I'd die and go to heaven. Mm. That's the thing. I know. But you're also talking to the old fogey group too. <laughs> I assure you 29 is not old. I'll tell you this. My brother is a rapper. Oh, like, sick. Big time. Yeah. Like my sister, I have a brother and a sister. I'm the oldest of three. My sister has won multiple karaoke contests. She's hilarious and could, she's just awesome. But my brother is a rapper and he would put together, um, they live in Oregon and uh, he would put together these big uh, festivals and um, they were called the Northwest Lyrical Festivals and it was all rappers he just got married a couple years ago and you know, he had guys come and rap and do beats at his wedding. <laughs> you know, I mean, pretty, pretty diverse group we are, but a very musical family. But see that that's almost akin to voice play them or sorry to Voctive themselves. It's almost akin to that. The diversity in that group is insanity to me. Yeah, it is. It which, really is. Which on it this, really on this channel, we often bring that conversation up. Okay, diversity in a group. Okay, why is why is Voctive allowed to have this level of diversity, but I won't touch this band because their hair is doing this in a windmill style um, fashion? And it's it's amazing. That's why I bring it up. I want to talk to people. Like for example, I love your group. I think the best things you guys have done is the Prince of Egypt medley. I still think that's amazing. I know a lot of fans on this channel, like uh, Lena and some of the others, love your Disney Love medley. I think it's called. Um, yeah, great. Uh, I like the princess medley. I think it was the other one was called. Um, sometimes, oh, the princess I, medley. yeah, oh yeah, that was fun. But but then I would sit here and you know, it's funny when we first did that one, um, we thought it was too long. I oh, mean, I remember listening to it and t telling Jamie, I, I just who's gonna sit there for this long? It's so long. And we thought, well, we'll just try it. You know, it just he really felt passionate about it, and he said, let's just try it. And sure enough, it, it went over really well. And now in our program, we do the um, Heroes and Villains. Mm. And it goes over so well, I can't even tell you. The guys standing in front, big manly men standing in front, singing these villain songs. It's just 
powerful and the people can't get enough of it. And that's another, you know, seven and a half minute song too. <laughs> right. Right. What is what is something that you've always wanted to do you guys just never got to? Or yet even. Never got to yet, perhaps. In fact, Jamie and I had this conversation last night at the concert. I, I said, so what is our next record, man? What are we going to do? And he goes, he goes, literally, I could do 50 albums right now. He said, I, there's so many things. We've talked about an icon album. Um, we all have, you know, different, um, obviously different artists that we're really in love with that we, you know, I mean, I, I would love to do something of Michael Bublé's, um, you know, the, uh, we talked about the Beatles. Um, you know, we want to do a lullaby album. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's we have um, a couple of brand new parents in our group. Um, EJ is the newest parent. And before him was uh, Carl, our low bass. And then um, Ashley, our Sopralto, we call her. She's the little dark haired girl in the middle. And uh, she, she's got two babies now, but you know, you never can go wrong with a lullaby album. So, but I mean, there's just so many things we could, you know, do a a carpenter's thing. I mean, you name it, we could do it. You know, it's just a matter of uh, getting us all together, and that's been a challenge because it's eleven fair. schedules. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, no kidding. No kidding. I mean, I gotta ask because the nerd in me—you can't really see it because I'm blocking it. But uh, no. uh, any video game medleys coming? The what? Any video game medleys coming? Do you know that we actually talked about that? Um, mm. what, our second tenor is a huge gamer. Big, 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 like gaming chair, gamer, gamer. And um, there's some incredible gaming songs. Um, we did sing Candy Crush. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah, I knew the Candy Crush one. Yep. Yeah, so we did that. But other than that, um, we haven't done that yet. But it's definitely on the table. I May I make a suggestion? Please, yes, please, write Pl this down. <laughs> <laughs> please, 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 please check out God of War as it has a classic Greek choir to it. Okay, God of War? Yes. Okay, all yes. right, I will. There, I mean, there's several, you know, that, I, that I've been told to look up. But, um, of course, I can't remember. But God of War, I will look, we will look that up. Chip, my husband's writing it down as we speak. So that I don't forget <laughs> the God, the God of War games were amazing. That was the big thing of our trip to Greece with my wife and I, as we went to some of the places in the video game and they looked the same. It was pretty cool. I I'm so, I'm so thrilled that you guys got to go there. I mean, there's so much history there. It's crazy. It's That's crazy. Awesome. So God of War. Okay. Yep. It's written down. We will send it on. God. So, okay. What you got? Fire, uh, fire more. Uh, I want to know about how you, you came to be like this, like legend in this group was that always your goal to be in a, such a diverse group where you're going to do the solo are you doing the solo thing now you're like no i'm going to teach and i'm going to call dj for a job whoa settle down <laughs> settle down you know i never um i never wanted to teach um i i've always just been a performer i enjoyed the performing i i've always enjoyed being on stage and i've always enjoyed a group even being even singing solos i I just have always enjoyed being with a group. I love backup uh, vocals. It's one of my favorite things. We do several things like the Heroes and Villains and the Trolley Song, and I mean, so many of them, but those have some vocal gymnastics. While the soloist is out doing their thing, we're doing vocal gymnastics behind them, and it is a blast. So if you're only a soloist and you don't get to do those other things that you enjoy, what a drag. So I've always been somebody who likes both. Okay. Always, uh, but never wanted to teach. It's just not my thing. So, um, you know, and I, cause I didn't go to college. Um, I, I started singing when I was, um, I mean, I was in church singing as a young girl, but I actually went on the road while I was still in high school uh, as a senior and went on the road uh, with a group from California called the Continentals and flew back and graduated sang cool. at my own graduation and then went back out on the road um <laughs> i'm a total road hound it's my favorite thing in the world love 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 to travel it's my favorite um not everybody is as big of a road person as me but man i mean i'm it's my it's my favorite thing and um 
So, um, yeah, I just, I like doing both. I, what I do uh, now is when I'm not with Voctive, I am um, a Christian singer. Mm-hmm. I sing in churches. And so I'll sing at my church in Orlando, you know, w- when we're in town. Uh, I'll be on the worship team there. And then um, if Voctive isn't doing anything and I have an opportunity to go out and sing, I'll go and sing my own concerts. I've got several um, solo records and um, and I've gotten to do that. And then I've gotten to do several uh, symphony orchestra things with, um, you know, of, of the American songbook and standards and things like that. But yeah, so I get to do both and it's my favorite. Wow. I wonder, have you ever gotten a chance to do the Roadhound thing across like worship groups, like uh, other churches across? Yes. So that's primarily where I got all of my road experience, really. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, next week, uh, I, I traveled with a group called Truth, and next week we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of that group. The group has been gone now for several years, but um, you know the director's still around and his wife and everything, and lots of you know three or four hundred you know um, alumni. So we're all going to meet next week and have a concert and <sighs> tell old road stories and stuff. But I mean, yeah, we would do a concert every night. Um, I traveled with them for one one time for a year and a half and then another time for three yeah three years so total of like four and a half years and um sang back up for a gospel artist named sandy patty for like five years and um and she's the she's actually the one that did our beauty and the beast video with us oh how do you how do you get these people involved how did you get um Kirsty, I oh, I said it wrong once, and they just let me have it on in the comment oh, thread. Oh no, that's terrible, Kirsten uh, Maldonado. Yes, how do you get a hold of like people like this? Or uh, is EJ always been in your group, or not just know him as a guest from other places? Uh, EJ confuses me. He's uh, like EJ's always been with us. Okay, yep. yeah, he's like a yep. ninja or something. It's uh, weird. Yeah, well, you know, he's just so good. He's in every group that there is known to man. So um, <laughs> we're just, you know, lucky to still have him. <laughs> and incredibly handsome. Very, yes. <laughs> um, uh, the love of, so Kir- Kirsten Maldonado, she actually got in touch with Jamie. Oh. She uh, heard our fly medley and said, I want... I've always dreamed of doing uh, a, a duet with my um, with my uh, fiance at the time. All right. And um, is there any way that we could do something together? And Jamie's like, I'll do whatever you want. And so uh, she's like, well, I just want to do some love songs with him. And Disney is my favorite. So he said, let's do a Disney love medley. And he put all that together. And she flew in and and with her fiance and they both recorded it and then came in and we wrapped ourselves around them and recorded it and it just was a, a special moment but she actually reached out first that's amazing yeah pretty cool and we've just stayed friends you know and so when Pentatonix is in town um she'll always call us and see if we want to come and you know she's it, I got tickets for you if you guys want to come if you're in town and which has been a really special thing you know um, we've just become friends with all these guests that um, have sung with us and it's just it's been a blessing and it's been a blessing to you know to us but the people that we get the guests that come and sing with us you know they have fun you know yeah. because like I said before you know if you're a big solo artist and you really do like the backups too, but you don't always get to sing them. That's fair. You know? That's so fair. So it's it's fun to to be a part of that too. So um, Zoom's going to cut me off, so I want to hit you with the really difficult question, if I may. I'm ready. The difficult question is: uh, you get a brief moment in time with a past self, be it ten years ago, five years ago, whatever. Uh, your younger self. You're not allowed to give yourself anything. You're not allowed to touch yourself or pass a gift or anything, but you get enough time to say one piece of advice. What do you say? Don't be intimidated. Wow. You're you're okay just the way you are. I think that's the best answer yet. (laughs) Wow. That's a good answer. 
That's... No, thank you. It, it's a hard industry. It's a mean industry at times. And, um, you know, if you're passive and, you know, you just kind of take the hits and you just go and then you let it knock you down and knock you down and knock you down when in fact you just need to be okay with you and just move on you know my hubby has been one of those rocks for me you know and um i've got some good friends that you know would say those things my sister's a big one too you know um but yeah just to not be intimidated and and be okay with the gift that you've been given because you're good enough I, I, I think so many people need to hear that. That's that's ridiculous. So thank you. Yeah. That That's profound. And I know we have a lot of fun at the beginning of this because I'm a jokester, but that's a good, profound way to. Yeah. To, and you're, you know what? You're good enough the way you are, the way you were made. You're made, you know, and I sing a song uh, in my con my solo concerts that says it, um, every shape, every uh, every shade, every shape, you're wonderfully made. Doesn't matter. You know, I, I'm a big girl, and uh, but you know I've been made just like this, and it's okay. I I think personally, your personality fills 115 stadiums. <laughs> Thank you. Because this well, is it, it's been a treat and a half to talk with you. Obviously, we could talk for another 30 minutes and you know fill a room. And uh, but I, I hope we can do this again because I really enjoyed talking to you. I didn't get to ask my questions. So. Oh, I I apologize, <laughs> but clearly you're more important than I. So let's let's go that way. Uh, it has been an honor, on absolute honor and pleasure. I I assure you the privilege is all mine, though. And thank you uh, for invitation, and thank you for all of the amazing support that you and your fans give. Um, really, we're very grateful very grateful and i hope that we can all meet up someday likewise my friend and uh yeah i hope we can continue to chat and wherever you are and whatever you're doing as we say on this channel i hope you're kicking ass and taking names you know it okay <laughs> thank you so much we like to say watch it go around here could i ask you to please give us a watch it go watch it go watch it go all right thank you very much we'll talk soon